Hello friends, and welcome back to my scuffed progression. To get things started and out of the way, I managed to level to 271. The 270s are taking quite a long time to get through, and it definitely doesn't help that I'm making a measly 2% per hour. These rates really make me wish I did this grind before the major Kish nerf happened. According to a few Evans I spoke with, they were able to make close to 5% an hour in the 270s prior to the first Kish nerf. Keeping in mind that I'm a Thunderbreaker, I would probably have been able to make at least 3 to 4% an hour, which would shave around 80 hours at minimum from 270 to 275. That is, if I were still able to attain those rates. No use dwelling on the past, but it's definitely interesting to look at how drastically rates have changed. I don't have many updates on Adele at the moment, as I've been prioritizing 275 on my Thunderbreaker. I'm barely keeping up with Arcane River dailies as is, and the only daily I'm actually guaranteed to run on Adele is Monster Park, because I'm coming dangerously close to running out of green and yellow potions. I'm perfectly fine on Sunday Monster Park boxes on my Thunderbreaker though, so I might as well continue running Monster Park on the Adele to eventually get my hands on the metal. Continuing onwards, a 51015 recently passed and I had roughly 30 bill to spend. Considering how expensive arcanes are, this is a drop in the bucket. Even more so since I spent 10 bill attempting to gain stars on my reinforced ring and superior earrings. I did manage to get both of them to 19 stars, which was nice as I was sitting at 17 stars and 18 stars respectively. 3 stars is still 3 stars. I did attempt to star my arcanes, and considering how little 20 bill is when starring this gear, I'm quite happy with the results. I currently have enough droplets to make one backup of either boots, cape, or glove if they were to boom. I do not currently have enough Aspera droplets to make another shoulder, so I got it to and left it at 17 stars. I decided to roulette my boots, cape, and glove until one decided to boom. Luckily enough, nothing boomed, and I simply ran out of miss, so. I finished with a 19 star cape, 16 star gloves, and 18 star boots. This of course could have gone much better, but it also could have gone much, much worse, so I'm content with the results. I've also made a decision to solo Hard Lotus before equipping my Arcane gear. Seeing as I already had enough damage to solo before Familiars came back, I have absolutely no excuse now that I have 3 Familiars unlocked. This will be a self-made goal before I say goodbye to my Absolab gear. But even with this said, I still have to roll Flames and Potential on the Arcanes before they're even better than my Abso gear. Speaking of Familiars, I don't believe I recorded myself opening them, but I did obtain 10 Familiar Badgers due to my luck with opening Booster Packs. I farmed just under 900 Odo Warriors before this patch and spent 750 or so on my main since I wanted a large drop for rate familiar on my Kana, which I did manage to get. Of those 750 or so familiars, I obtained two 30% boss damage familiars among other things. My current loadout familiar loadout is as follows, two 30% boss damage lines, one small HP and MP restore to party, and a singular three attack line along with 30% IED. I only listed 5 lines, as the 6th line is a useless jump and speed line, and according to my calculators, familiars increased my final damage by just over 12%. In reboot, the way players are to progress with this system now is absolutely awful and super user unfriendly to say the least. For better or for worse, I've somewhat learned that Nexon is more prone to take things away, or at the very least make them infinitely harder, so I try to take advantage of things such as epic familiars dropping when I see them. This isn't to say I believe exploiting the system is the right thing to do, but I do heavily encourage players to use their time wisely and try to think ahead of what Nexon might do to give progression. But keeping this in mind, Nexon still seems to be a headless chicken when it comes to making balances and changes. I have a lot of sympathy for players who were not around or simply didn't farm Odas or Boogies or other epic familiars when they were available. I don't think it's right to blame those players for not farming when they should be able to expect a pleasant game experience or at the very least a reasonable one. I know my voice won't carry far, but I still like to advocate for having some sort of cube or card for familiars in Reboot. I'd be more than fine with being hard stuck with unique familiars, but I'd at least like to have a way to reroll my potential since this gives me a choice of what familiar I can use, or want to use. Odas and Boogies seem to be what everyone's running due to what was available in the past, and you can't blame them for using what's optimal, but it would be nice to have a choice. I'm straight up out of epic familiars now, and I won't be doing anything other than buying my daily booster pack on my Thunderbreaker and my Kana, so I'm done with this system for now. If I somehow pull the cards required to complete a badge that grants either 1% attack or an additional 3% IED, I'll definitely go farm the regular mobs to finish the set, but I don't see myself farming any field bosses in the near future. I also completely forgot to mention, and I feel I should mention, that since the last video, the Maple Memo that I was expecting was released. 
To say two unique potential scrolls is lackluster is an understatement, but with the release of this memo, I did go ahead and use the cubes I bought and attempted to tear things up as best as I could on my second Kana and my main. This did not go as well as I hoped, or would ex and as you would expect, it wouldn't go as well without a DMT. But I used all my cubes and finished what I could, which is to say nothing was finished. I'll continue grinding and I hope to update you all soon on new accomplishments. Uh, but until then, bye bye.